hey, Master Gardeners, we had to take a break from that outdoor gardening to get you indoors because I didn't want you to miss this spectacular houseplant that's in bloom at our office. So I want to know if you know what it is. Come on over here and take a look up at this. Whoa, I know you're all going ooh and ah because that's what everybody does who sees this spectacular flower. This is a clivia. It's a house plant that blooms naturally at this time of the year. And whoa, what an explosion of color. Who wouldn't want a plant that blows you out of your room with beauty in the boring months of winter when it's still cold outside? I know you probably want one of these. They're not gonna be too easy to find. But let me tell you, it is an easy plant to grow. Let me show you mine. This is mine from at home. And I've had this plant since the 1980s when I purchased it at the Philadelphia Flower Show. This is a durable plant, especially if I can keep it alive. It's big, three foot wide, three foot tall, got some size to it, but the foliage overall is very beautiful. Shiny, sword-like leaves. It's in the amaryllis family, and therefore it's uh, parallel veined leaves, but it has beautiful foliage. Now, mind you, I see some of mine are scorched, and I've, I've had some problems because I grow mine, I put it outdoors in the summer months. So when we get well into May, I'll move it outdoors into a shady condition underneath of my trees. But sometimes the morning sun has reached it and scorched my foliage. So that leads us to what kind of light does it need? Most people would probably keep this in the house all the time. And if you did that, you would put it in a morning sun window or an evening sun window. You'd never want that really strong south facing sun. In the area of Southern Africa where they're from, they're understory plants. And so they would need that shade. So east or west, when I move it outdoors, it's under my trees, protected from a lot of heavy direct sun. What kind of watering? Well, I tend to let it go dry between waterings. And I'm not a person that ever overwaters. If anything, I neglect on the dry side, and I think that's why we get along so well together, is it likes to dry. Do I fertilize? Yeah, when I remember. But if you wanted to do it monthly during the blooming periods, that would be helpful. But the real question is not the foliage. It's like how to get this spectacular flower. You might have to work at this part a little bit. This is a cool temperature plant. It's going to need a 50 degree night in the evenings. So you got to have a cool room in your house that you don't heat as much or you know it's going to be leave the window open a little bit for a while. It needs to have those 50 degree night temperatures for about one month. And then after that cold period, then you're going to give it a little bit of dryness. It's a lot like growing a Christmas cactus. They like similar conditions. So letting it dry for another four or five weeks after that, and then begin your regular watering to promote blossoms. And wowza, you'll get this showstopper bloom that everybody loves. Comes in different colors, yellows and oranges. And they say there's colors of pink I've never seen. It comes in white, and I understand that Longwood is doing a breeding program, and they have a new green one that they're gonna be introducing. So if you ever wanna see the show on Clivius, oftentimes in the February months, Longwood Gardens has a show, and they do sell some in their gift show. And buying them, you might find them at the University of Delaware plant sale. I saw them there like a year ago. Or maybe you can find them online somewhere. But really a cool, amazing plant. Let me show you the root system because one of the factors about anything that blooms, any blooming plants, whether it's your African violet or whatever, you, the general nature of a blooming plant is it likes to have restricted roots inside the pot. You don't want to rush into repotting a blooming plant frequently. This one has been in this pot for probably 10 years for me. Let me show you the root system. If you saw this, you might think, oh, this needs repotting. But it really is not to that stage yet. I do have a lot of roots. Actually, now that I'm looking at it, giving it a second look, maybe this baby pup on the side could be pulled off and the rest of the mommy plants leave in there. But you, it has a very thick, fleshy root system, and I want it pot-bound inside my container to induce it to bloom on a regular basis. Look over at this other one. You can see we've got pups in this. I transplanted this probably, uh, I would say it's been three years ago. I transplanted and moved this single plant into the pot, and here she's pupped three babies in the last three years. And as much as you as a master gardener might want to give these to ba babies to friends, you've got to delay doing that. You want to keep it in this pot and keep it pot bound so that it continues to bloom for you. So wait until those roots are kind of emerging out of the top and that's your indicator that you need to transplant it. But that's a spectacular plant that I wanted to share with you. I didn't want you to miss. So glad you stopped by for our video today.